All right, today, class, we're going to learn how to do blood cultures. Um, blood cultures is typically used when the doctor suspects septicemia. Septicemia is an infection in the bloodstream. What we're going to need for, to, to draw our blood cultures is we're going to need our lab bag, obviously. We'll need our tourniquet. With this, we're going to need a winged collection set or butterfly. We'll need our adapter. We'll need our culture bottles. We'll have one that is aerobic, and we'll also have one that is anaerobic. Aerobic means with oxygen, anaerobic means without oxygen. And then we'll also have any other tubes in case there's more samples. We have our gauze. We'll have our chlorhexidine gluconate. And with this, typically we cleanse the skin with the 70% isopropyl alcohol but it's not strong enough to kill any normal skin floor, so we'll need the chlorhexidine gluconate. If this was unavailable, you certainly could use iodine. Also, have my gauze, my gloves, everything's ready to go. First thing that I need to do is with my blood cultures, we need to draw off a total of 20 milliliters of blood off an adult patient. If it was a pediatric, we'd only have one bottle, and it would be up to four milliliters of blood. So what I want to do is on the graduated barrel, I want to mark where the transport median is. Okay, And then I also want to mark where 10 milliliters is because we'll put 8 to 10 milliliters in each bottle. This way I know when to stop my blood collection. If I happen to fill it up too much, this could affect the test results. So, transport median and 10 milliliters above. Also, one of the things that you need to check to make sure that your blood culture bottles are in date is the bottom. There's a disc in the bottom. It'll be of a gray nature color. And if it had been expired or contaminated, the disc will turn a bright orange color. This is how we know our bottles are still good. These bottles are plastic. Um, most bottles that you'll see for blood cultures is still a glass method. So be careful when handling these. They could break very easily. All right, we have our bottles marked, and what we need to do now is we need to cleanse the top of our bottles. We'll go ahead and place our gloves on at this time. You want to pop the caps off your tops. Take an alcohol prep, circle method, and leave the alcohol prep on top. Set it to the side. Next alcohol prep. Same thing, cleanse the top, leave the alcohol prep on top. Then we'll want to go ahead and palpate our patient and apply our tourniquet. Okay. Go ahead and palpate with our two non-dominant fingers. You can ask your patient to make a fist if this helps you. On my side. With our chlorhexidine gluconate, we tear open. And we'll want to make sure that the sponge only touches the patient. Pull directly out. And on this method, we want to do a vigorous scrub up and down and side to side. This is different from a normal blood collection because we go in a circle concentric method. This time, up and down vigorously and side to side. We'll need to do this for 30 to 60 seconds. If you was using iodine, you would need to do iodine for a complete minute and wipe off any excess residue before. This can be a little bit of time consuming, so you want to be sure to lock the appropriate amount of time as you're watching the clock. Okay, we'll say it's 30 seconds. Go ahead and dispose of that. And with the blood cultures, we need to use a butterfly. And assemble our needle. And we're also going to use a transfer device from the blood culture manufacturing kit. 
With this, there's also an adapter in it so we can collect any additional tubes after drawing our blood cultures first. And we'll just screw in the lower adapter. Okay. And we'll want to go ahead and begin with our aerobic first. Aerobic means with oxygen. And then our anaerobic second. All right, anchor your patient's vein. On the count of three, one, two, three. Have the blood flash. Be sure to watch for your fill line. Looks like we have our 10 milliliters in this one. Disengage, set to the side. Grab our anaerobic, insert. Normally you'll hold on to your butterfly, but it, it's typically best to let it sit freely since we're drawing so much blood. And we have our 10 milliliters in this bottle, set to the side. And at this time, we'll pretend the doctor's also ordered a coag study. We'll go ahead and put our adapter in, and we'll draw our coag tube. Remember, our coag tubes must be filled completely. Okay. It looks like the coag tube's almost full, so we'll go ahead and release our tourniquet. Disengage our tube. Grab our gauze. Fold once, fold twice, pull our needle out, and cover with the gauze. And remember with the butterfly, we need to go ahead and safety cap by pulling up the plastic sheath. You'll hear a little pop. Keep in mind there's also still blood in the tubing, so be careful that you do not splash the blood on yourself. You'll ask your patient to hold the bandage for a second. Thank you, sir. And with this whole system, we'll dispose of in the biohazard box. We do not separate this, so we'll take directly to the biohazard box and drop in. We'll go ahead and invert our tubes and our bottles three to four times, depending on your facility or manufacturer of equipment. Invert them. And we'll go ahead and label our tubes and our bottles with the patient's name, date, time, and initials. And also, we'll do the same thing on our blood culture bo bottles in addition to write down the site where we drew our blood at. With this, it would be the patient's right AC. Okay, we'll put everything into our lab bag. And send to the lab. Now if your facility has the plastic blood culture bottles, they are safe to send into a pneumatic tube system, but be sure to follow your facility's requirements. Okay. And at this time, we'll go ahead and bandage up our patient with the tape and thank our patient. Please do not forget to instruct your nursing staff that initial results will be resulted in 24 hours and the final result will come in about 72 hours. Okay. And thank our patient. Thank you.